Hello and welcome everybody to Cooking with Elisa. Thank you all for joining me. Um, I appreciate each of you being here because it helps hold me accountable in something that I've wanted to do for over 10 years. Um, I received this cookbook, Mastering the Art of French Cooking, more than 10 years ago from my husband as, I can't remember if it was an anniversary or a birthday present, I think it was birthday. And ever since then, I've been wanting to um, go through it myself. But as you can see, it is a very large, big cookbook. Um, it is over, let's see, over almost 700 pages. And it's not like you would see normal cookbooks. She really tries, Julie Child really tries to teach you how to cook, um, not just throw recipes at you. So the whole first section of this, uh, 40 pages or so, is on how to dice correctly. Um, certain vegetables to use for certain things, kitchen equipment, um, your ingredients and your measurements and temperatures. There's a whole section on wines and certain wines to use. So I'll be giving you some of that advice as well that's from this, but if you wanna purchase this cookbook yourself, which I highly recommend, um, this is the anniversary edition. Um, you can get it on Amazon. I'll pop the link below for you if you would like to purchase it yourself. Um, but it's just a great cookbook just to teach you the basics of cooking. Um, but today we're gonna start with just the simple soups. We're gonna start in chapter one, which is the soup chapter. And the very simple soup today is going to be the leek and potato soup with a watercress option um, to add the soup. So um, we're gonna start that right now. All right, so to begin, we have uh, potatoes here, a pound worth of potatoes, which is about four, um, and a pound of leeks. So quickly, I am a Pampered Chef consultant, so I'm gonna be using all Pampered Chef items today, um, just because I think they're the best, not that I'm trying to sell you anything. Um, but I'm just gonna quickly peel these. And I am using a bowl as a trash can for me. This is um, an idea I received from Rachel Ray um, years ago when I first started cooking to have a bowl as your trash can of sorts and to put all your peelings, all of your ends and stuff like that in it so you're not having to go back and forth to the trash can. All right, so I finished peeling all the potatoes. And now we are going to, you can either dice the potatoes um, as such, just quick dices. Remember, curl your fingers when you are cutting anything. Um, matchstick fingers will get cut. So we want to curl them like a spider on our potato. And holding a knife, she goes, Julia goes through this, through the cookbook to the proper way to hold a knife. Um, it's very important to give you um, the right pressure for cutting and it makes cutting so much easier. A lot of people want to hold the knife back here on the handle and go like this, but then you have too much weight on the front here and it's not evenly distributed. So the way you want to hold it is put your index finger on the blade and your thumb on the other side of the blade. So over top of the blade, the index finger and the thumb, and then hold the handle with the rest of the fingers and then you're gonna slip quickly, go through like this, just quick dices, and then move them up, and then little squares. It doesn't have to be um, super small because this will be cooking in the liquid and then we'll be pureeing it. Another option you can do is with a mandolin type thing like this. This is the Pampered Chef Simple Slicer. Um, but this one, Marshall is my son Marshall is going to show us how to use this You're going to put the potato in to hold it and then Marshall you can come into the camera. This is Marshall. Hey Marshall <laughs> So you can cut it in dices or In slices like he is doing all right, let's see where you're at where are we at here? Oh. Yeah, you got it. See, some <laughs> large dices here. And he will keep dicing that up for us. 
And then we'll move to the leeks. There we go. There you go. How many of the rest of you guys have this join you in the kitchen when you were cooking? Let me see if I can show you. Do y'all have one of these join you cooking? Our little dog thinks that we are going to drop something and she is going to get some of the food, <laughs> which she normally does. All right, Marshall, how many more we got? Two more. While it doesn't matter how large the dices or the slices are, one important thing to remember is that they're all the consistent same size. Um, that helps them cook evenly. So you don't have any overdone vegetables or not cooked enough. All right, so we've got our potatoes. I'm going to add those to our pot. And then we have the leeks here. Leeks, it's important. They have a outer skin on them, just like a green onion or something of that sort. You want to peel that off. Don't include that in your food. That goes in the trash. Leeks is something I don't cook with a lot, but they smell amazing. Um, and they're gonna add a really great flavor to our food. All right, so I'm gonna cut off the ends of the leeks. Now we are going to just slice the leeks. Like I said, it doesn't matter exactly like how thin. It doesn't have to be thin, because it's gonna be cooking for a while in the liquid. Just make sure whatever size you use is um, uniform throughout so that they cook evenly. All right. This recipe, this potato and leek soup recipe is a common base recipe that they use in uh, French, a lot of French cooking, a lot of the restaurants and homes in France. Um, they use this as their base and we'll add other things to it. Um, but starting from here, so we're going to play around with it a little bit. We're going to do the base. We'll add some water press to it and I'll give you some ideas of other things you can add to the vegetables as well to make an even different soup. Curling my fingers and pushing the vegetables, pushing the vegetable down as I cut. Making sure I have a nice grip on my knife to keep it from going all over the place or cutting myself with it. Now, cutting myself is something that I don't do a whole lot of now I'm better at but I'm not perfect I still have moments where I do but I used to be a hairdresser as well I'm licensed in that I still do hair a little bit but in hairdressing you learn um, you learn how to deal with cuts as well because when you're first learning you end up cutting your fingers a lot and um, you kind of get used to that it doesn't bother you quite as much anymore but anyway I'm gonna throw that into our pot too and I am using the Instant Pot to cook mine in. I will show you that real quick. I am using the Instant Pot to cook mine in. Um, you can pressure cook this recipe, which is what I'll be doing because we're gonna be having it for lunch today. Um, or you can cook it on the stove top in a stock pan. Um, a cast iron stock pan, I think is the best to make soups in. I'll show you an example of one 
we have a couple here that we use regularly. We got these, um, these at Sam's. I think we got both of them there. They're great cast iron pots. Um, they're very heavy duty and they're great for cooking foods that have to cook for a longer time, um, like soups. All right, so now I have my links and let me see what we're gonna do next. She calls for water in the recipe, but then when you make this soup cold, which I'll show you both options and how to do that, I'm gonna make it warm today. Um, but when you make it cold, you she suggests using a white stock or a chicken stock. Um, or a chicken broth. So I'm gonna go ahead and use that even in my warm recipe because I think chicken stock adds so much more flavor to your food. Um, so I'm gonna add about one and a half quarts of chicken stock. All right, so one container of chicken broth, one of these 32 ounce containers is about one quart, and I need one and a half quarts. So I'm gonna mix my chicken stock with about halfway full of water. So I'm gonna add water about to here in my chicken stock container still, to still add a little bit of the flavor. All right, so that's about one and a half quarts. Now if now I'm gonna add some salt to that. She says one tablespoon of salt, um, but if you are going to be making this cold, uh, making it a cold soup, you want to add more salt because um, the temperature of the cold soup can make it lose some of its saltiness. But I am gonna keep it warm, so I'm just gonna add one tablespoon of salt, or a big handful if you don't like to use measuring cups when you cook, or measuring spoons. Um, and then that will just pressure cook for five minutes. Or if you were to cook this on the stove top, you would simmer it for 40 minutes to um, 50 minutes. All right, so I'm gonna set my pressure cooker to manual five minutes and then that will start and then we'll see what it looks like when it's through all right we are back and the soup has pressure cooked for five minutes and it simmered for 15 that's a part i forgot to mention before so it is about ready for me to pull out layla is joining me here and she is going to help us with this next part all right so layla i got a lot to do can you lift up the Instant Pot? You're gonna turn it. Turn it. No, turn it the other way. This way. Turn it, turn it, Layla, the other way. There you ah. go. Now lift up. Ooh, all those potatoes and leeks. All right, so we're not done with it yet though. Leave it open, Layla. And we are going to add you can make, like I said, this with just potato and leek. And from this point, you would just puree it. Um, you can either mash up the vegetables and make it a little bit chunkier, or you can use an immersion blender like I'm using or put it in an electric blender to blend it up. Um, but there's another option where you can make it like a watercress soup and add watercress to it. Um, watercress is something that we could not find, but a good um, substitution for that is arugula. So we're gonna take, we're gonna add the arugula before we mince it up, I mean, before we puree it. A cup of packed arugula. Layla, can you pack, a, pack the arugula in here? Just, yeah, just fill, fill it up with the arugula. Ah, okay. Push it to pack it. So you get lots of it. There you go. All right, now you're gonna dump it in. Ta-da! Very good. All right, now we are gonna take our immersion blender. I'm gonna turn off the heat before I do this. And Layla, do you want to do this part? To use an immersion blender, you have to unlock it first mm -hmm. and then push the button to have it go, okay? <laughs> One 
Once it's unlocked, you don't have to keep holding it. Oh. This is our first time. It's All right, I'm gonna let you see what we're doing here. All right, just mix it up until there's no more chunks left or as chunky as you want it. And then. That's not that bad. That's seriously not that bad. I thought it was gonna be terrible, but it's not. How's it taste? Good. Yes, and like I said, you can, if you make this the cold, version um like i said add more salt to it because as it gets cold it loses the salt flavor it's not quite as salty um but if you want to do it cold just add more salt and then um when you're finished with it chill it um and you can make it the exact same way with or without the watercress and um like i said this is a base soup recipe so you can add other things to it like some options she gives is you can add carrots, um, let me see, carrots, turnips, um, tomatoes, dried beans, that would be really good in it, cauliflower, broccoli, lima beans, peas, um, even some shredded lettuce. Um, if you want to do the things before I mentioned before the lettuce, you put those in with the leeks and potatoes when it's stewing or when it's simmering, but if you want to do things like um, the shredded lettuce and like cooked leftovers that you might have um, of vegetables or tomatoes, juice, tomatoes, things like that, add that at the end. So, cause that doesn't have to be cooked, but there we go. I hope you enjoyed it. And tomorrow we will be bringing you the next soup recipe, which is- I don't know. Ma no, ma no mushrooms. <laughs> Cream and mushroom soup. See you tomorrow.